For men, five days without bathing was fine, but it made us feel very uncomfortable. We felt like dirty dogs. American patrols went out searching for the tunnels. The entrances were cleverly concealed. When they managed to find them, they first attempted to blast the Viet Cong out with grenades. We tried everything possible to destroy the tunnels, including soldiers that were small, that were called tunnel rats, that would go down in the tunnels and try to clear them. But they were so cleverly done that you could never find where the, the actual end was. It would be a, a dead end wall with a hidden door going down to the next level. Sometimes a gorilla stayed behind, waiting. While much of the countryside was in Viet Cong hands, the Americans and the South Vietnamese government appeared in control of the capital. But all the time, the Viet Cong were infiltrating Saigon. The level of fear and distrust grew. Many families were split by the same ideological divisions that cut across the country. Lam Van Phat had a sister who had been a communist in the north. But he'd risen to be a general in the South Vietnamese army. Traditionally, the family is everything in our country. But there was nothing I could do to convince my sister that the Communist Party is not a family because she'd been brainwashed. His sister reappeared in Saigon and came to live at her brother's house, and she used his position and contacts to gather intelligence for the Viet Cong. If I'd used my brother for personal gain, then it would have been wrong. But as I used him for the benefit of the country, for the people, I was right. I'm proud of what I did. Suspecting his sister, General Fott reported her, and she was arrested. An American cameraman filmed the way prisoners like Mrs. Phan were treated by South Vietnamese interrogators. When they questioned me, they attached electric wire to my ears, around my breasts, my feet, and even in my vagina. They then turned the power on so high I thought I was going to die. Whilst the current was running, they poured detergent into my mouth. My stomach swelled up, and they kicked my stomach until I vomited. They also strung me up and beat me repeatedly. The Viet Cong might never have succeeded without the support they had from outside the country. A 500-mile jungle supply route led from the north through Laos and Cambodia. Down it came a stream of trucks carrying food and weapons given by the communist countries for the big offensive that was still expected. Because the risk of air attacks increased as they went south, supplies had to be unloaded and moved along by other means. Each of the four bags of rice I carried weighed 100 kilos. I put two bags at each end of a pole and tied them together with a piece of string. As I walked uphill, I pushed the bike along with another pole against my shoulder. The Viet Cong believed the final stage would come when they were strong enough to take the fight into the cities. 
At the end of January 1968, at the height of the New Year Tech Festival, they struck. The first target was the symbol of the American presence in Vietnam, the United States Embassy. About 20 Viet Cong had invaded the embassy compound and were now battling American Marines and military police. The Americans broke back into the compound at 7 o'clock and used small arms, tear gas, and grenades to get at the Viet Cong. The attack on the heart of Saigon was part of a series of assaults by 70,000 Viet Cong all over the country. The offensive had a major effect on American opinion. The former political advisor Earl Young was now back in Washington. I thought, total disaster. Because psychologically, the American people were already very uneasy about the course of the war. And when they saw this apparent victory of the communist forces by being able to, to enter every one of the provincial capitals and capture many of them, the American people said, this is it. You know, with all the American troops there, everything we've done in South Vietnam, if we cannot prevent this kind of an attack, if we cannot prevent the American embassy from being, from being captured, my God, what are we there for? The South Vietnamese reprisals were savage. But the thousands of guerrillas killed or captured couldn't hide the fact that Tet was a political and strategic victory for the Viet Cong, who were still led by the general who defeated the French, Vo Nguyen Yap. What we were trying to do at Tet was to force the Americans to give up their policy of escalation and to start de-escalating instead. Our aim was to break their will to continue the war and make them withdraw their troops. Though the Americans stayed on for another five years, a withdrawal finally began in 1973. By then, 58,000 Americans had died. Of course, I was extremely happy. I'd sacrificed my whole life up till then. Now the Americans had withdrawn and we had victory. In early 1975, North Vietnamese regular troops and Viet Cong entered Saigon. Now the communist ideology that had sustained them through a war would be tested against the problems of poverty and reconstruction the country faced. In Afghanistan, nationalists tried to use the methods of guerrilla war to resist the same communist ideals that had been fought for in Vietnam and Cuba. A remote and mountainous country, Afghanistan was wedged between Pakistan, Iran and the Soviet Union. Its 15 million people cherished fierce tribal loyalties. A deeply Islamic nation, Afghan society was almost feudal. In 1978, communists seized power in the capital Kabul and tried to impose a radical program that would turn a traditional society upside down. Many Afghans found the changes an offense to Islam. And after an uprising in the countryside, the Soviet Union sent in its own